welcome. And I'm so glad you could join us for our next installment of GRC Makeshift Productions for our worship service on April 26th, today. Um, I've lost track how many of these are now. I think we're up to number five, but uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you could join us for this special day. Um, to begin with, as I always do, I just want to thank you again for all your support and encouragement. I've received so many kind notes, um, gracious notes, uh, either via email or in the mail. Um, we've also continued to receive donations that uh, keep us strong during these uh, crazy days. Um, and I just feel very blessed to be part of this good congregation. So thank you so much. Um, a reminder again that all things are on hold here at the church. There's no gatherings going on at all. So, um, and I don't know when that will end at this point. Um, it's at least through May 15th at this point because um, that's the new news we've gotten from the governor. Um, but uh, how we're going to wade back into coming back and returning to uh, semi-normal maybe, um, I just don't know how that's going to happen yet. So. Please stay tuned. Um, I do want to ask for your prayers for our Sunshine Day Nursery. Um, they will be opening up on May 4th. Um, they are an essential business. Um, they have worked hard to set in place all um, the required conditions that are needed to open up and uh, uh, going to be very careful um, with making sure that all the protocols for uh, uh, keeping kids safe and teachers safe are going to be followed. Um, and they do have a number of um, essential, uh, they have a number of children who are, uh, who have essential parents uh, that are working out there on the front lines. Um, so this is an important service to offer. So I ask you to hold our teachers, to ask the director, ask you to hold the director and, and all those who are involved in our sunshine as they start up, hold them in your prayers. Um, last week we tried at 11 o'clock till 12 noon, um, having a time when people can zoom in to do a little fellowship hour. Uh, Mrs. Williams actually brought cookies, but uh, obviously she couldn't pass them out very well. So we had virtual cookies and uh, virtual coffee. And uh, uh, I'm going to try that again. We had about, I'd say about, people were popping in and out. I'd say about 14 people all together that finally came. Um, so if you'd like to join us, I'll be sending out a link. Um, it's not hard if you can, uh, if you can click on the link uh, and then it'll automatically bring you up to a Zoom page on your computer. If you can't do that, you can simply call the phone number I'll leave you. There'll be a, um, uh, a password that goes with it and also another number um, that you will have to input. But once you do, it's not that hard. Um, you, can, uh, you won't be able to see who's there and we won't be able to see you, but you can participate in the conversation. So I encourage you to try it. Um, this is new territory for me and if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it too. So if you'd like to join us for that little uh, time of chatting, uh, we'd love to have you be part of it. Um, let's see, and I think that might be it. Yes. So let us worship God together. Beloved, this is a day that God has made for us, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I hope that you were able to download your worship sheet uh, from the email that I sent out. And if you did, you may join me in the bidding words. I will read the leader part, and I invite you to respond by reading the people part. I love the Lord. As do, As do we. we. God inclines God's ear to us in times of trouble. Though it is difficult to measure God's response, we know that God's presence is near. We have come to pray, O Lord, save us. We pray this because we know God is listening. And we know the day will come when we will again sing God's praises. Come, let us worship God. I invite you to join me in singing our hymn, our first hymn, which is Come Christians, Join to sing. The words are on your worship sheet.
I'd be grateful if you join me in our prayer of confession as we offer to God those things in our lives that need God's grace and healing. Um, it's a responsive prayer. I will again read the leader part and I invite you to respond by joining me in the people part. Peace be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, when we do not see you walking beside us, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. When we do not recognize you in the faces of strangers and friends, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. When our vision is blurred, let, let us see, see you in the breaking, breaking of bread. bread. When our hearts are broken, light, light them, them on fire with Easter hope. hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the good news, my friends, is that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Therefore, it's my joy to declare to you that in the name of the living Christ, our sins are forgiven. Believe this good news and live in its peace now and always. Amen. lesson for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. It's that wonderful story about uh, two disciples on their walk to Emmaus. So listen now for God's word to us. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus that was about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk alone? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? 
That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. I've got to say that it continues to amaze me how these scriptural texts for these Sundays seem to fit so neatly into the context of where we are today. As old as these words are, they are as contemporary as they could be. They are like an old friend reminding us that we walk not alone. The circumstances, of course, are different, but the emotions and the feelings are paths that have all been trod before. When I look at my calendar, it tells me that I'm in the Easter, in the season of Easter. Yet, when I look at the landscape of where we are, I have to say I feel like we never left Good Friday. It is thus so easy to relate to the opening lines of the story as life's blurred lens slowly moves in to focus on two ordinary people slogging their way back home from Jerusalem. Their feet shuffle with slowness. Their heads are cast down. Their bodies betray their stress. They too are in the season of Easter, but it surely would be difficult to tell by their mannerisms. There are two of them, Cleopas and an unnamed other. Clearly Cleopas is a disciple of Christ, but this is the first and only time his name is mentioned anywhere. And some suggest that maybe the unnamed other is his wife. It would make sense, like many, together they went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And now they were returning home after witnessing the shocking loss of the one they had come to call the Messiah. This unnamed other also provides us with an opportunity to insert name here, our name, so to speak. An invitation to become part of the story that's really not as hard as it looks. We can only begin to imagine the conversation Cleopas and the unnamed other are having. <clears throat> what do we do now? We had such high hopes. We, we thought Jesus was the one. We anticipated that the time had finally come when God would set things right. We had given our lives to him, our everything to him. And now what do we do? Later on, they would say that some women astounded us by saying that Jesus had risen from the dead, but we decided it was an idle tale. An idle tale. Maybe it's a conversation we'd, we've had with ourselves or even maybe a few close friends. A whisper conversation for fear that God might overhear us, a conversation that frightens even us as we admit that maybe we made a mistake. Yes, we heard the women say the tomb is empty, but it feels like an idle tale. As the number of deaths from COVID-19 continues to stagger us, as jobs seem to dry up, as loss drags us to depths we've never experienced before, and as we fear fearfully wonder what's next in this new and unexpected territory we are now in. You know, it was bad enough that we could not celebrate Easter with all the pomp and exuberance that we normally do. But now we find ourselves in the same old tragic place as if Easter never happened. Yes, we take our place next to Cleopas on the second Sunday after Easter, our feet shuffling with weariness, our shoulders pointed downwards. Resurrection is a hard thing. Easter is a hard thing. We don't have handles to hang on to it with. It feels like an idle tale cooked up by some overly zealous followers. How does Easter become real in the lives of real people and in the moments of real history? 
Well, suddenly a stranger sidles up alongside of us. Why are you looking so glum? He asks. Rude though it might have sounded, Cleopas says what we are thinking. Has this guy been living under a rock? Are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened? Do you not read the newspapers? Do you not watch the news? Do you not listen to the radio? Have you not checked your Facebook account? Gosh, have you not even listened to the gossip on the streets? <laughs> we thought he would be our savior. We had sacrificed everything to follow him. We thought he had sent, God had sent him to redeem all of creation. Now well, he's dead. It's over. Nothing's changed. We're in the same mess we've always been in. Jesus is gone. And so are all our hopes and dreams. For some unknown reason, we, they do not recognize who the stranger is. Maybe the presumed impossibility that it was Jesus made them dismiss any urges of recognition. Maybe their grief was so stark they had trouble making him out through their tears. I don't know. Some women told us that Jesus was alive, risen from the dead. They said, but you know women, they see what they want to see. Little side note here. It's interesting that this whole story ends up confirming the women's idle tale. With equally strong pushback, the stranger tells them they're fools. Have you forgotten your Sunday school lessons already, he asks. The stranger then proceeds with a Bible study. Yes, Jesus pulled out his pocket Torah scroll, asked them to turn to Genesis 1, and started a good old-fashioned Bible study right there on the road to Emmaus. Doesn't seem like the first tact we would take to make Easter real in our lives or the lives of those whom we love. Maybe we would look for signs like a rainbow in the sky or a butterfly or something whose beauty spurs us to delight. Maybe we refer them to a good book or maybe a moving post on Facebook. Maybe some good would even come from it. But it's not the tack that Jesus takes. Jesus offers them a Bible study. We're not told what lessons this stranger focused on, but it would not be a stretch to think that it included lessons about how God used the impossible to give birth to the possible. You know, the impossible made possible, like enabling Abraham and Sarah to give birth to a son in their old age. Or the impossible made possible, like choosing a stutterer and murderer, like Moses, to liberate the Hebrews from slavery. Or the impossible made possible, like choosing at least the least likely of Jesse's sons, David, to become the greatest king Israel has ever had. Or the impossible made possible, like using a guy named Saul, an obsessed persecutor of Christians, to be a critical component in bringing the gospel far beyond the borders of Judaism. So is it really so far-fetched to think that the same God could come to us as a flesh and blood child born to peasant parents? Is it, is it really so far-fetched to think that the same God would use this weak, vulnerable, crucified one to redeem all of creation? Later, Cleopas would ask, were not our hearts burning within us as he talked to us on the road? I, I love that phrase, partly because I have seen it in action. I felt it myself, and I've seen it in others. It's that moment when I suddenly light up, when a spark of renewed energy bursts forth, when something hard to describe makes a face shine with indescribable joy as the stories of our faith are discussed. Few things 
can compare to moments like that. It makes all of the hard work of getting there worth it. Jesus, in his effort to make Easter real to Cleopas and the unnamed other, and even us, led them in a Bible study. And as he did, I can't help but to believe that he helped them to think for themselves, as he had done so often, by telling parables and very rarely giving a straight, unambiguous answer. He taught them to think to discern with integrity, to honor the text with soul, heart, and mind. He taught them to not reduce the text to some cold rule book to beat others over the head with, but a text that washes, washes over one being, inciting the heart to burn with excitement. Well, as their journey together came to an end, the stranger bid his friends farewell. Cleopas and the other, unnamed other, however, insisted that the stranger come and stay with them. A reminder, perhaps, that Jesus does not force himself on us. Instead, he waits. He anxiously waits for an invitation from us. And as they sat down to eat, the stranger, who is a guest, ends up becoming a host. He took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them just as he did the night before his arrest. Just as he probably did when he turned a few fish and a few loaves of bread into a feast for thousands. Just as Jesus does every time we gather at our communion table to share bread and drink fruit of the vine. And it was at that moment when everything became clear was at that moment when they realized that the stranger was really no stranger at all, but the living presence of the risen Christ. It was at that moment, at that moment, when Good Friday finally became Easter. An impromptu Bible study on the way to Emmaus, a loaf of bread, broken, blessed, and shared, it seems so simple in a world where we think we need the complicated, the extravagance, the startling that shakes people awake to convince ourselves and to convince others that Easter is real and Jesus is alive and we're not on our own. Word and sacrament. It seems so simple in a world where we think we must work so hard to impress people, maybe even ourselves, that Easter has moved from the impossible to the possible. It seems so simple in a world that feels so dire and so frightening and so dark and so chaotic and so broken. So simple. But could this be the remedy we are so desperate for? Could this be the way in which Easter comes close to us, even now and even in this unlikely place? I suppose there's only one way to find out. Stay with us, Cleopas and the other unnamed other said. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. Teach us, break bread with us, and stay with us, Lord Jesus. To God alone be all the glory. Amen. Nancy, my wife has been kind enough to uh, be sharing um, children and worship stories with us. Um, today, she's going to be doing a story about Do Doubting Thomas. I'm grateful to her for taking the time to do this and for uh, Justin, who's been um, taping it for us. And um, so stay tuned. Christ is risen. The Lord 
is risen indeed. Let's sing our first song. Oh God, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you. stories. So today I'm going to tell you the story of Doubting Thomas. After Jesus died and God made him alive again, Jesus' disciples would gather on Sundays, the first day of the week. On this Sunday, Jesus' disciples were very happy and excited because the last time they were together, Jesus had appeared to them. He was alive and he appeared to them in this very room. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. And then he said, Go and do just as God has shown through me. Now you go and do the things that I've done and the things that I've said. And then he breathed on them and said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. But Thomas was not there that day. Thomas said, Unless I can see and touch the nail marks in Jesus' hand and touch his side, I just can't believe that Jesus 
is alive. And it closed the room and closed the doors. And then suddenly someone appeared. And he said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, come Thomas, come see and touch the nail marks in my hand. Come touch my side. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Thomas, Jesus said, you have believed me because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe and have yet to see. I wonder why Thomas doesn't believe the disciples when they say that Jesus is alive. I wonder how the disciples feel when Thomas doesn't believe them. I wonder how Thomas feels seeing Jesus alive. I wonder why Thomas calls Jesus my Lord and my God. I wonder how people who have not seen Jesus believe that God raised him from the dead. I wonder how the disciples feel when Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. I wonder how the disciples feel when Jesus says, as God has sent me, so I send you to do what I have said and done. I wonder how you feel about this story. I wonder how you feel about Thomas. I wonder how you believe that Jesus is alive. Today's story is in the Bible. And we light the Christ candle Help us remember that Jesus is with us when we hear his stories and read his word. So today's story is in the book of John. That's in the New Testament, Old, New, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders, and on the evening of that same Sunday, they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. He greeted them and showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they became very happy. After Jesus had greeted them again, he said, I am sending you just as the Father sent me. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. 
although Thomas the twin was one of the 12 disciples, he wasn't with the others when Jesus appeared to them. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, first, I must see the nail scars in his hands and touch them with my finger. I must put my hand where the spear went into his side. I won't believe unless I do this. A week later, the disciples were together again. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were still locked and stood in the middle of the group. He greeted his disciples and said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and have faith. Thomas replied, you are my Lord and my God. Jesus said, Thomas, do you have faith because you have seen me? The people who have faith in me without seeing me are the ones who are really blessed. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now change the light that's here with us now in our worship center. Now you can fill this room. And be everywhere, even at home with you. Now let's sing our goodbye song. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Um, before that, I invite you to take a look at those uh, prayer concerns that are on your worship suite sheet. Please keep them all in mind. And as I mentioned before, please keep our Sunshine Day Nursery in mind as they prepare to open on May 4th. Um, the prayer does have a response to it. What I would ask you to do is that every time you hear living Christ, risen Christ, walk beside us, that you would respond by saying, even as we ask you to stay with us. Okay, so let us join together in prayer. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are still so isolated from one another, feeling like we are slogging along on a lonely road, alone and on our own. We are still searching for Easter hope in a world that feels more like Good Friday. We are still hungry for an encounter with the Holy Other, even as we wonder where the road ahead will finally take us. Oh Lord, we pray that you might come up alongside of us. Speak to us even in our inability to recognize you. Remind us of our faith stories that have nourished and fed the generations before us. Light a fire within us, even when we think there is no spark left in us. There is so much on our minds these days, O oh God, so much that potentially blocks our view from seeing that you are risen, you are alive, and divine hope has not been extinguished. Living Christ, risen Christ, walk beside us, even as we ask you to stay with us. On the lonely path we are on, we think of those who are frightened and feeling especially vulnerable. We think of those who are risking much to care for neighbor and even stranger. We think of doctors, nurses, technicians, and medical support staff. We think of custodial staff, food providers, and administrators.
We think of how worn out and disheartened these good people must sometimes feel. Live in Christ, risen Christ, walk beside us, even, even as, as we, we ask, ask you to, to stay, stay with, with us. us. On this lonely path we are on, think of those, we think of those who feel like the bottom is falling out from underneath them, for business owners and their employees, for the unemployed, for the financially distressed, for those who are hungry and those who fear the loss of their homes. For parents and caregivers, for nursing homes and other long-term care facilities, living Christ, risen Christ, Walk beside us, even, even as, as we, we ask, ask you, you to, to stay, stay with, with us. us. On this lonely path we are on, we think of those who are charged to make difficult decisions in an atmosphere of increasing tension, anger, and frustration. We pray for our president, for correct congressional leaders, for world leaders, and for their advisors and support staff. We pray for governors and state workers. We pray for local governments and leaders. We pray for our churches and for those whom we look to for guidance and hope. Living Christ, risen Christ, Walk beside us, even, even as, we as we ask, ask you, you to stay, stay with, with us. us. On this lonely path we are on, we think of ourselves. We think of the many contradictory emotions churning within us and how hard it is to put on a brave face for those whom we love. Oh Lord, we need to sense Easter, even in this place that feels more like Good Friday. And so, living Christ, risen Christ, Walk beside us, even, even as, we as we ask, ask you, you to stay, stay with us. us. O oh Lord, we pray for these concerns that we now name either aloud or silently. Living Christ, risen Christ, walk beside us. Even, Even as, as we, we ask, ask you to, to stay, stay with, with us. us. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn is, appropriately so, one that goes with our text for today, the Walk to Emmaus. Um, it is Sing of One Who Walks Beside Us. The words to the hymn are in your worship sheet, and I invite you to join us in singing it.
stay well, don't panic, and remember that you are a child of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.